you know, we as a physically challenged people, all of us have been going through our struggles from the very time we've been having this issue. And for me, it started very early. I was just two and a half years old. And that's when I was diagnosed with uh, polio. Uh, and that to see, uh, I was born in Bihar, a village in Motipur, which is very hideous for its crimes and everything. And for me, it was very different. Like my mother, being a mother, of course, she has accepted it, how it was. And she still took care of me and always tried to make it best. Even she had the idea of being not out to save me. And that was it because most of the doctors also had thought that, okay, I think he doesn't have the uh, chances of survival. In that time, she did not lose hope and always fought. She went from post to pillars to cities to went to villages, different doctors, everything. And then she managed to keep me surviving. My father was very discriminatory about me. He used to always remind me that, you know, how you are physically challenged and people around will not accept you. And also that it will be very difficult for you to be settled in life, have your financials right, be at the right job and also be married to a proper uh, family. So all these things were there. But luckily, one thing was the fact that somebody in his life came and told him not to be not out on me. He said, like, let's see, you've sent all your kids to Darjeeling, like you send your daughter, your child, I mean, your son, everybody's gone to Darjeeling and they're studying just because you have faith in them and you feel that they're going to do very well in the future. Why don't you give him a try? So in that way, I think my dad tried to put me in a boarding school in Darjeeling. Uh, the best part about the school was like, See, they also taught me not to be out because see what happened out there was like I was in hill station and I was walking only in one leg and the other leg was very weak and it's more like every time I walk it got sprained. So, but they still made it compulsory for me to be part of it. Like they try to put in like saying that irrespective to whatever is my condition, I still have to participate in every activities, be it education, be it sports. So in that I had no option. So they were actually in, indirectly inculcating me the habit of being not out that your body condition is not an example or not a limitation. You still have to go on with it. And this is just the beginning for you. Here you might be at a very level one great stage of difficulties, but as you get older, it gets difficult, more difficult. You'll be mean, knowing about the world, how it is very discriminative to us, how everybody around us is just like, having sympathy, but not the real opportunity given to me. I took up high jump. One thing was that there were many instances where some of the people out of concern came saying that, you know, Sharad, you have a problem with one leg. You need the other leg. And why are you trying to do high jump? You might break it. So out of concern, it was maybe, but that was like a discouragement for me. I felt like, you know, somebody's trying to discourage me and saying that, you know, don't take part in it. So I wanted to prove them wrong too. So I just took my brother, I met him, I told that, you know, I need to do this thing. And he, he wrote an application saying that he takes all the guarantee. And after taking that, he let me be there on the crease. Like, it's like, he helped me to stay on the crease. So then I got the permission. I went on ahead and made high jump my passion. And I started loving it. So when uh, there was an instance where we went to play cricket. So each time had to take, each team had to take about 11 players each. So there were about 22, 22 of us. Everybody was selected. Everybody picked up one guy or the other. For me, like, they didn't pick me up. It was the last. So that other team had no alternatives, but to say, okay, Sharad, you, you are going to this team. Uh, I knew that, see, I have to prove myself here too. I don't know. It was like, I was young, but I still had the determination thing that, you know, I have to prove myself here. The most of the team got out. I was the only guy left and they needed quite a lot of run to win. Just it happened in life and I learned it that, you know what, if you want to be on the top most, you got to prove yourself at the opportunity that you have been given to, uh, given at. So for me, I did that. And from that day onwards, there was no like none of the friends of mine or the students tried to discriminate me on this term. They never thought me to be different because I outperformed them. And that was one time where I realized that, all right, now I'm in a very stable environment. Then in this period, like, See, ultimately, we all, we para-athletes know that our body has a limitation, right? But in that, how do we utilize that opportunity as an opportunity is something that I learned from my teacher, Mr. Dennis. He told me that, Sharad, see, I know you love sports and you want to be in the Indian cricket team. And because I was a captain of the school levels too. So he wanted, and he knew the fact that it's going to be difficult. He told me that you have one scope, try the Paralympic Games. So 
I was like, all right, let's just take a give a hit to it. So when when I came to B- Bangalore, and I saw the condition of the whole Paralympics Federation going, and it was so disheartening that I did not want to take part in it. It was like uh, everybody was crawling around. There was no proper equipment, no infusion of money, nobody sponsoring nothing. But there were still people out there, many of them. Now look at the Paralympic Committee today. From where I was trying to look in 2008 and now 2022, the whole country is now proud of us because they were also knowing that if we give it up, they are done. But they did not get it out. They, it was not out for them. And now they've come till so far. Like even the prime minister gives maximum of its time and priorities to us. So that's how it is gone when they, we have a determination of not being out. So uh, in that point, I realized, all right. I didn't take part because I felt uneasy there for a while and I just left away. Uh, I went back home and I told my parents that, you know, like I did participate, but I lost because I was not willing to accept it. I was not wanting to adapt to things because after being at a nice environment, all of a sudden I come to such a, a terrible situation place. I didn't want to be part of it. But then I went back. Mr. Dennis again told me that, you know, Sharad, here it is a situation for you that you have to just do the thing that you like, irrespective to what is around you. You cannot control the environment or anything. You just have to do, go ahead, just perform yourself. And irrespective to whatever the results, how I, at least you know that you give it a try. And that try for me became an opportunity. Uh, there was an athletics competition that was going to happen. Um, and the team was canceled because there was no athlete wanting to go. There was, everybody was like, we are cricketers, we are into uh, double tennis or chess and everything. But nobody wanted to take track and field. So I just took a ticket on my own personally and I just went to the uh, competition in Patiala and I just filled in my name through saying that I'm from modern school Barakamba Road and I want to participate in high jump. I came there and the best part was that I was the only guy representing the school there and I got the principal's award for winning high jump gold. And as I got back to Delhi, the school was on celebration mode saying that a boy was just a physically challenged person going out there doing high jump. He did not take permission because he felt like, you know, he was a little shy or maybe he was thinking, he was not very confident, but he went there and won and came back and improved the point to us. So it's always about, for me, not out is like being able to prove a point to certain people that you have to take us seriously. And then came my professional, see, I started taking sports thoroughly and seriously by then, but then the real hardship hit me very hard before the Tokyo uh, London Paralympic Games 2012. I thought everybody around is very cheerful people and they'll be very close and they'll help each other to become proper sports persons. And all. There I was framed into doping when I didn't do anything. But that's what happened. Maybe it's a lesson that I've learned now that when this came in, uh, I had to go for my exam and then someone sabotaged my food and I just ate that up. But then nobody believed me. And that was another plot that to prove a point that when I didn't do anything, I have to prove myself through games. So I got a ban in 2012 London games and then I couldn't perform. Uh, So this two years of ban gave me such uh, motivation to prove them wrong that, you know, everybody, the whole, whole system went against me, be the athletes, be the administration, be the government. Everybody's like, you know, this guy must have done it because that's the whole thing. The whole environment around sports has become such that everybody assumes that everybody is using illegal tactics, irrespective to what the politics might be. But then that's when I decided that I'm going to be not out and prove myself to them that I can do it and I'll prove it. So then in 2014, I go for the Asian Para Games. There too, there was a lot of uh, politics out there where they wanted other athletes to go and they were not wanting to give me an opportunity, thinking that I will come and hit their blue-eyed boys away. So this was another thing that was happening. But I did not give up. I went there to the uh inter nation games para games and prove my point i won a gold medal broke the record in the asian para games and from that day onwards most of them tried to change their perspective towards me they felt that you know this guy has a he's always proven his point like when he's right he will fight for it and he'll go for it and that's what i did and that's when the recognition started coming up uh, to me and then everybody started supporting me but that when you start getting support and recognition then that's when the evil starts coming into your mind too. I started thinking, okay, I'm invincible. I'll go. I'm the best athlete and all. So I went to 
uh, USA. I started training there. I was like, okay, maybe let's enjoy this life too. I went there and I was like, okay, everything is life. I started giving more importance to the materialistic world than that of my sports. And that's when I had a hardest hit. In 2016 and 2015 uh, World Championship and 2016 Paralympic Games, I couldn't perform because I got injured. Because that's when, when you have always that you take something more what you love and you let it go away, it will give you that result only. So same thing happened with me for sports. It hit me hit back very hard saying that this is what how this is how you disrespected me. Now I will finish off your career. But that's when I learned my lesson. I know that I did a mistake. I took it up and then I knew what are the solutions to it. So I trained myself to go to Ukraine to stay there till the Tokyo Paralympic Games. If I'm committed to something, then we can always like I should get that. So there were a lot of things in this day when I went there, firstly, because I wasn't having financial uh, because I, I, I did not perform. So, of course, nobody wanted to help me. Uh, I had to take some loan from friends and then go to Ukraine, train up properly there. And, and in this due course time, I was so thorough with my training that I left everything around. I was only training and sleeping, training, sleeping. That's it. That was the pattern because I wanted to prove a point and stay not out. And that is what I felt. I told my coach too, that he did not believe it, that, you know, an athlete from India is going to come to Ukraine, live there for so long and train. He thought that it was a three month stunt and that's it. He'll be gone. But it did not happen. I told that I'm here to stay. We had faced a hardship there. There were a lot of times I had my injuries. I even had a surgery. So a surgery all by myself alone in a, hotel, uh, in a hospital and in deep pain was all filling me up. And then it was making me realize that, you know, is it all worth it? All these things that we are being doing, like staying alone away from home, staying away from family and every friends around, they're having a nice life. They are being all celebrating and me, I'm giving myself a struggle saying just to prove a point and to win a medal in the Tokyo Games. But then... I realized like, okay, just take this up. Since I have taken up a target, let's not just let it go away. Let's finish it up. In this due course, of course, my performance improved. And then uh, I got a bronze medal in Tokyo Paralympic Games. But I realized after that, see, we feel that the thing is like, okay, when you prove up, the whole thing is that you win up, you come to a situation, you win your goal or you get your target, you think it is the end of it. But the real problem, I think, now started was after the Tokyo Paralympic Games, uh, where, of course, the whole idea of a journey is, I think, the best part of it. See, in the Tokyo Games, when I was uh, injured a day, a day before, I was wanting to give up. Like, I just want, I didn't want to perform anymore. I was like, God, everything wrong thing happens to me. I couldn't get in 2012. I couldn't get in 2016. Even now in 2020, I'm here. Uh, of course, firstly, it got delayed by the COVID situation and we were all training in such a manner that uh, we didn't know what we were doing because it was just an arrow shooting in the darkness because we're not even sure that the games were happening or not happening. So these things were adding more and more stress to us. So it was getting heavy loaded on us. And after it just got extended. And then at last moment, when it's time for me to perform, I get injured. It's like everything going against me. And that is where I felt very... It was getting very dangerous for me. I was like, I think it's not for me. And also in this phase, when after the doping until now, it came to me in such a way that I have now become a person living with anxiety. It is such that uh, everything around me is somehow, even though not under my control, is creating a problem for me. But then that also did not say me that, you know, Sharad, you got to stop doing your sports. I went on ahead doing it. And then... See, at times we, we are people, we are like, we go through our struggles and then we are, we feel that we are alone. And sometimes that's when we want to finish it up. But the thing is, I never read it. The Bhagavad Gita, I, I never read it. So when I was crying a day before with my parents and all, I was telling them, this is what I'm going through. And I think I'll give it up. They told me to read it. And I read it and I realized that how it is just about doing the task or the goal, the kartavya that we are supposed to do. And that's what is a whole idea where I was wanting to back out now when I entered the stadium I was grateful to God that you know God thank you for this opportunity that I am being given that such a beautiful stadium which has got such positive environment that I can perform in this see everybody tells you that you know the end result is the best and of course like you want to achieve something but nobody tells us 
that when your end result is achieved is what when you realize the confusion begins that when do we start things it will just there will be new opportunities coming see i never expected after i was accused of doping i thought like you know uh, i will never get the national awards and all but my performance spoke and the government recognized me and gave me a national award for it so these are things which we don't imagine and these are opportunities which we think we discard because we are always directed to one goal and that makes it like okay uh, this is the world of it all but the whole point is not that it's all about life that we have to there's so much to life and we have to be not out to be happy and see and feel the other greatness too so that's how i think like uh staying not out has always helped me to move ahead it just gives me a hope that you know there's more to life there's nothing more there there is something which we can always look forward to because if the day we feel that it is done that is when it is done that my coach has a saying like we keep working work at all coach when will you stop working he's like i will only stop working the day i stop breathing so that is what for him it is always to be not out because he wants to keep doing everything different every day and i think that's how it's and for for most of us that we want to be not out in most of our lives and just carry on because there's so much more beautiful things to it so that's how i have been not out and i'm trying to be not out like see the game now i've come back to the training center here we know tokyo is 20, in 2023 at uh, paris is in 2024 and i'm thinking like okay my sports is over because i am already achieved what i had to achieve but life is automatically getting me on a real a path itself it's not that i have to plan for it now it's just like because i am letting it open i am trying to put in an effort in everything that is coming my way i'm trying to go with it so i think not being not out is not just a situation to achieve something or an opportunity it is about getting the whole feeling of life there's so much to it so yeah that is i think uh, that's how not out comes to me uh, and i hope that this part like how my journey life struggle has gone gives in others also that a whole point that it's never a point that is going to end till the time we stop breathing there's always going to be opportunity we still got to have a lot of foresight and see that just put in eye efforts